The previous video looked at how our nervous system is organized. In this video, we'll take a look at the neurons that these systems are made out of. There are three main types of neurons, sensory neurons, motor neurons, and interneurons. Sensory neurons are responsible for carrying information from your sensory organs, like the eyes, ears, and skin, to the central nervous system. They transmit signals related to touch, temperature, pain, and other sensory experiences. Motor neurons, on the other hand, transmit signals from the central nervous system to the muscles and organs, enabling them to respond. So these signals control muscle movements and trigger other bodily functions. And then we've got interneurons. Interneurons are found within the central nervous system and they act as a bridge between sensory and motor neurons. You've actually got around a hundred billion inner neurons in your central nervous system and there are different types but neuroscience is a relatively new field so we actually don't have a system to classify all of them. Anyways, inner neurons process information received from sensory neurons and transmit signals to motor neurons. They're kind of like a middleman in your brain. Okay now let's take a look at the different parts of a neuron starting with where they receive information. So we're gonna have to talk about dendrites. Dendrites, dendrites are branch-like structures extending from the cell body of a neuron. They receive incoming signals from other neurons and transmit those signals towards the cell body. The cell body is also known as the soma, and it contains the nucleus and other cellular components of the neuron. It gets these incoming signals from the dendrites and then generates electrical impulses. Okay, the next part is called the axon. It's also known as the long skinny part. It's the part of the neuron that carries electrical impulses and transmits them to other neurons. And the axon is surrounded by something called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is a protective layer made out of this fatty substance that insulates the axon. It serves the purpose of speeding up the transmission of the electrical impulses that run along the axon. And fun fact, your neurons in your brain might not be fully myelinated until you're about 30 years old. This myelin sheath is created and maintained by something called glial cells. Glial cells are basically the support staff of the nervous system. They provide physical support for neurons, and they keep things running smoothly by removing dead neurons. Okay, up next we've got terminal buttons. Terminal buttons are also known as axon terminals, and they're small structures located at the end of a neuron's axon. They're responsible for transmitting signals from one neuron to another. Think of them as these tiny buttons at the end of a wire that allow information to be passed to the next neuron in line. When an electrical signal, known as an action potential, reaches the terminal buttons, it triggers the release of chemical messengers that we call neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters are packaged in these small little sacks called synaptic vesicles and they're released into the synapse which brings us to our next concept the synapse the synapse is the space between the terminal buttons of one neuron and the dendrites of another neuron when neurotransmitters are released from the terminal buttons of one neuron they travel across the synapse and bind to these receptor sites on the other neuron this binding process causes changes in the receiving neuron either by exciting it or inhibiting its activity essentially the synapse acts as this bridge that allows information to be transmitted from one neuron to the next neuron in chemical form. So our nervous system communicates in kind of a strange way in that it's electrical when it's going down the axon, but when these neurotransmitters get spit out the end of the terminal button, that's a chemical message. So our nervous system communicates through electricity and chemicals. Okay, that's our little overview of neurons, and in our next video, we'll look at how neurons fire.